tap into your peers and your colleagues who do something really well and learn 1% or 2% to better yourself from what they do, then that's going to help you continue to develop your career moving forward. And that's definitely what I've tried to do um, through my mentors and my peers and what I hope to continue to do moving forward. That is fantastic. And actually, um, I was just reading some of the chat, which actually ties into a lot of your comments. So Pam Evans had said, taking on new roles, despite extra work and pressure, gives one opportunity to expand your career development and get more visibility within the company. And so um, I love what you said about you say yes. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I've done that um, quite often throughout my career. And I think I can't remember as one of the long timers in AVPM, it might even be Pam, uh, might have been Ellen uh, Fifner, but someone had said, you don't you know, go to school to become a briefing professional. I don't think any of us, even many of us probably didn't even know that it existed. I know I certainly didn't. Um, but when you enter into it, and we're all here and obviously probably all love this, this chosen profession. Um, and, you know, I was very much the same. I was actually in the trade show side of the house and had no idea that this even existed. I went, this tells you how long ago it was. I went to a job fair and found out about this role. And um, that was, you know, way back 20 plus years um, at Veritas. And it's something I obviously loved, but after, you know, a later stage in my career, maybe after doing this for so long, I, I know I love briefings. I love the community. I love working with sales teams, making an impact, but um, you know, where I was at in my last job, I'll talk a little bit about that. I was ready for something new. I just didn't know what it would be. So I said yes to a new opportunity. Um, what had actually happened, we had a lot of churn in our company and there were some changes at our executive level leadership. So our CEO's chief of staff actually went on to, um, you know, run a different department. And so she said, um, I, I don't know how they say volunteer nominated. I forget what that term is, but essentially uh, she said, are you looking for new challenges? I said, yes. So I ended up taking on a lot of, uh, well, pretty much all of our CEO's customer engagements. And so that meant any customer meeting, any, anytime he was traveling, meeting with customers, it tied in just beautifully to the EBC and to our exec sponsor program. But again, I didn't know what I was signing up for, but I definitely said, yes, I was ready um, and that was, it was definitely a big challenge. Um, I feel, I realized probably for me, that wasn't a hundred percent a fit. So really, um, the other thing that you said, Jocelyn is, you know, connect with your peers and ask for help. It's something I'm not very good at, but I got to that point. I thought, I don't know exactly what I want to do next. So I ended up working with a career coach and we really brought it down to the basics, um, because I was trying to remember what it is I love, what I was good at. And that was just helpful for me at that point where I was in my career to figure out what am I good at? We went down to the basics, any job that I'd had for a year in my whole entire life, you know, including babysitting, um, you know, each one of those jobs has transferable skills. And then we brought it back, you know, to figure out, okay, I'm a builder. I enjoy building programs. I enjoy building centers. Um, and so that really helped, helped me stay clear for what it was I was looking for. So I think that's, that's the big piece is just looking for help in your peers and your network um, within your own company. I think everybody loves to be asked for help. Um, and I think people love mentoring, especially in this community. I mean, even on this call um, at any of the ABPMs, I think that's one of the things that we love is that networking component. So um, the other thing I would say is I, I totally agree with being okay with ambiguity or more comfortable, maybe not okay, but comfortable with that. Um, because like you were saying, you, didn't, you don't 100% know what you're signing up for. You have to have a pretty good idea. But the more you can be comfortable with that, I always think like I said in the beginning, in, in the times of churn and just in the times of ambiguity, you have the opportunity to, to be in the driver's seat a bit and get comfortable with that and set a path. Um, the other thing we talked about was in our prep for this was if you don't have a plan for yourself in your career, somebody else does. So um, I always said a lot of times I, I really believe in career development. So I, as I've had teams, I can't tell you how many times I've said, okay, great, let's figure out you know what your path is going to be and you know what do you want to do? And so many times it was, I don't know. So um, it just it benefits yourself, I think, to, to have at least an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be clearly mapped out, but you need an idea. And especially as there's churn, people can know, all right, you know, this is what Jocelyn's good at. This is what she's known for. Much like you said, you, maybe you don't like those, those reporting and metrics, but you are good at it. So having those strengths, knowing that other people know those strengths is key. And you were going to, you yeah. had a comment, it's like, I feel like it, uh, one of the big things, and and I know, you know, I've heard this throughout my career so many times, but like you are in the driver's seat of your career. You have to take it on yourself and own your own career and push yourself. And whether that be 
figuring out what you're good at and what you like and what you get back to the basics, like you said, Stacy, or whether it's, you know, looking to see what's next and it doesn't have to be a new job. It doesn't have to be a new role. It could be, do I want to get a professional certification? Do I want to get my master's? Do I want to get something you know, some kind of education or training, or it, it can be as simple as a Mandel training um, to get better at professional speaking, things like that. But what is go going to help you get to like be 1% better or get to your next goal? Because it is, you know, all of our individual responsibilities to own that portion of your career. I like that we said that 1% better. Um, I'm going to guess there's probably a lot of recovering perfectionists here. Um, you know, we, we all think I'm going to do, you know, 50% better, um, you know, and you're only going to be probably, you know, set up for disappointment. Um, maybe not, but yeah, I think having realistic goals in terms of what your development could be, what your next role might be and how you go about that, um, and prepping for that. Okay. So, um, Naomi, you also were not immune to, uh, career changes. And I would love for you to share just a little bit about your journey um, with from Mandel to Mandel powered by Vantage Partners. Yeah, I'm actually going to start with how I wound up at Mandel, because just inspired by what you all just described of have an open mind. I had gotten a call from a headhunter. And oh, right before I tell you that story, I had literally that day put the post-it note on the bulletin board that said, I desperately need to take a presentation skills workshop. It just said, take presentation skills training because I had sold sales training for eight years of my career. I felt really good about my sales process up into the point where I had to give the decision maker something to say yes or no to. <laughs> and I found that I was creating my own obstacles to making the presentations, which were the key part of getting something sold. So I I'd had a really, actually kind of a traumatic getting ready for a presentation where I was up all night and I was like, how am I going to speed read this 180 page PowerPoint deck that I got from marketing and I'm calling things out, trying to make it look like I listened. And I got a call from a headhunter after sticking the thing on the post-it note on the on the on the wall. And he said, I have the perfect job for you. And I said, Oh, thank you. No, thank you. I'm not looking. And he said, first step is to fly you to San Francisco. And I said, wait, what? <laughs> Already in my own agenda. I have my best friend lives in San Francisco. And he said, and put you through a two-day presentation skills workshop. And I said, This is impossible. I'm so powerful. Hello, universe. I just literally put it on the bulletin board. And they said, if you promise you won't be mad at me, if I don't take the job, I do want to take the workshop. And kind of winding the thing forward to job searches like dating, it doesn't hurt to let somebody tell you you're pretty. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to go out to lunch once in a while and just, just find out what your street value is. You don't necessarily have to have bad intentions. And also a job is a relationship it's not a marriage. And this conversation that we're having here, we are not homewreckers, Bonnie. <laughs> we don't want any of your Dell people going anywhere else, but we want them thinking about how they can grow and contribute to Dell and be considering what's possible in the organization to support the agenda, the mission that makes this successful. So anyway, 17 years later, so I took the workshop, I became like the guy from the hair club for men commercial who's bald and gets the hair plugs. And then now he's, he's the CEO of the company because he just loves it so much. And he's so evangelical. I worked for Mandel for 17 years. The founder and the owner who were 50-50 partners decided relatively abruptly in 2022 to retire. The first thing that I did was say, okay, finally, I get my time to write my book. Second thing I did was call my biggest customer that had 86 workshops scheduled to start the week after our last workshop. It was a very difficult conversation. What's beautiful about the relationship that we had was the first thing they said was, are you okay? And the second thing they said was, how about this trainer? How about that trainer? How about this logistics person? How about this solution design person? And then they said, what are we going to do? <laughs> and I said, you're the first call I married. I'm still kind of in panic mode myself. They hung up the phone and called Vantage Partners. 
and I had worked alongside Vantage Partners. Do you want to show the bridges model, Stacy? Absolutely. Let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and then finish my story on the Vant on Vantage Partners. But if you're familiar with the bridges model, it's very similar to Elizabeth Kubler Roth's death and dying of on the left hand side. This is your left, right? <laughs> left hand side looking in a mirror on the left hand side it's it's the shocked and angry and denial and fear and sad the endings and in the middle it's it's chaos and in the begin in the right hand side it's new beginnings i knew this model from when i was in the career management industry and i was assessing myself and i said i'm not mad i'm not scared i'm not sad i'm going to write my book it's time it's fine and my husband i will say he was like i've got your back he was all of those things. <laughs> but I was also saying to myself, me? Oh, maybe. I don't know, you know, because I did know that that was on the chart. But 10 minutes after I had made that call to my largest client, the chairman of the board of Vantage Partners called me and said, would you be interested in joining us? Because we're here to serve your largest client. And they need to solve a problem. We think we can solve the problem. We can... We can either create the IP and have our trainers do it, or even better, we could maybe we could get your IP and have our trainers do it. But best case scenario, it's completely seamless to the client if we get your IP and we have your trainers do it. And I was like, well, wait a minute, this is maybe a chance for me to keep doing what I love with the people I love. And if I'm going to write a book about how the job search is like dating and Prince Charming calls first, Mom was picking up the phone. <laughs> so I was, I really, really was so blessed with this opportunity. Do you want to go to that next slide that we have, Stacey, um, about the career transition yeah. complexity index or something like that? This is something that we used to talk about when job shift complexity matrix. We used to talk about this when I was in the industry. And if you think about that lower right-hand side, if you take another job in another company that, or in, in within your company that's not too big of a shift, it typically doesn't take too much time. It's not that hard. If you think about what Jocelyn did in her evolution, let me see, I'm going this way, is Jocelyn, Jocelyn's evolution within Dell. She stayed in the same company and she's had different kinds of roles from when she started with that marketing rotation. If you think about Stacy, she was in a different role. She was running the briefing program at Cohesity and switched over to Nexus. Thank you for staying in the community, Stacy, and thank you, Nexus, for keeping Stacy in the community. Um, but it could have been it could have been a bigger stretch. You could have gone further, right? It would have been harder to go further. And if you look at where I am on this job shift complexity matrix, I don't, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm just in a different company, but it's and and it's a it's a company with a company with a very similar culture of really good, really smart people. So that's I think we all have had different changes. And we want to, I'm I'm sorry we aren't able to have everybody see everybody's chat, but please feel free to kind of pitch in as we're talking here about your own experience um, and, and what you're seeing in job change as well. Um, but yeah, so I had the opportunity to stay with ABPM, to stay with Mandel content. What I love about Vantage Partners is they approach it with such humility and compassion to recognize the power of the brand that Steve Mandel built over 35 some years. Uh, it makes they call us Mandel powered by Vantage Partners, which which they they are really our infrastructure. And they also, their legacy is amazing. They, they were founded by the Harvard Negotiation Project. The one of the founders was one of the authors of the book, Getting to Yes. So negotiation is our superpower. And they helped negotiate the end of apartheid. They helped negotiate the release of the hostages from Iran. I have people that I know and work with who are in pictures in our office, arm in arm with Nelson Mandela. And I'm just, every time I'm there, I'm just like, this is so cool. I'm just, I'm, 
I I am really excited to be part of the legacy. But I will I will stop uh, carrying on. Stacy, back to you. Absolutely. I think that just reinforces also the, um, you know, say yes. I mean, of course, how could you, how could you say, have said no to that? <laughs> all of this has been stumbling forward over all these years. And the one thing is, if I ever do get to the point where I write that book, now I have the credibility of having to have had a career change. That was probably the gap in my life experience. Absolutely. Well, and we are going to hear more about that, but first we are going to jump into our next poll. And this one is, I would like to just reinforce that this poll is anonymous. So um, I'm going to pull up the poll here. You're all waiting for what that means because that sounds <laughs> ominous. <laughs> it's good. Trust me. And we will share the results. Um, and again, triple reinforcing, this is anonymous. So um, how are you feeling about your current role and um, just where you're at in your career journey? Again, we'll give everybody about 30 seconds. While we're waiting for that poll, um, I see that Jackie Coca had asked, I would love to get any feedback or guidance on beefing up our reporting skills in the realm of executive briefings, especially from someone who didn't think that would be a strong area for them. I'm looking to really strengthen those skills as much as possible. So Jocelyn, <laughs> yeah. we'll make sure that we are, I mean, she was at uh, Zscaler a year before completely moving to a new role in the executive briefing program. Yeah, I would love to talk to you, Jackie, about uh, the reporting skills and the data analytics that I didn't think I would like that I like and now am in deeply. <laughs> it's my day to day <laughs> a lot of times. Okay. And then Stacy, I know, I don't think we're seeing the poll. Looking, right. It looks like for some reason um, it did not launch. Give me just one minute to see if I can troubleshoot this one because this will be a good one. And I would ask everybody to... Um, put their answers in chat, but then it would not be anonymous. <laughs> right. We triple reinforced that. So we're not doing it. We did. We did. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, for some reason it is not launching, but give me, it says it's launched, but for whatever reason, not showing. Let me try something else here. Okay. I don't think it's going to launch. Well, well, I think we should not worry about it. But what, yeah. we, what we will share amongst ourselves, the questions are super fun and cute. No way I would ever leave unassisted. Asking for a friend with cute eye rolls. Actively searching for greener pastures or at least a different pasture. And lastly, all of the above, because it sometimes depends on the day. <laughs> but we were really looking to see. So what 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 you can know about us is that whoever you are, because you are ABPM community, the three of us and all of us, all of ABPM are on your team. Mm 